In order to monitor Windows devices using PowerShell, you need to make sure that you configure WinRM service. We have three options, all of them described in the manual. First, you can use PowerShell configuration script that is bundled with Microsoft Windows Server Power Pack. You can use manual commands. Or you can use group policy for those Windows machines that are connected to the domain controller. For more details, please refer to the manual. Before you configure WinRM service, you need to decide whether you want to use encrypted or unencrypted communication. Keep in mind that encrypted communication requires much more configuration. Specifically, it requires a certificate installed across all your Windows devices that will be monitored using PowerShell. If your environment is locked down and Collector is deployed within that lockdown environment, you may want to consider unencrypted as it requires much less configuration. Local user is used for Windows machines that are not connected to a domain controller, and the domain user is recommended for those Windows machines that are managed by Active Directory. You need to make sure that the local firewall is configured to allow traffic from the data collector. Let's configure WinRM using PowerShell configuration script. On the Microsoft Windows Server PowerPack page, you can download the file which is a zip file that contains the script. Let's extract that script. Next, let's go to the manual and we are going to go through the steps that are described right here using a script. First download the script. Open PowerShell as admin and run this command. Let's do that. Run as admin. Copy the command from the manual, which I have opened in a note, and paste it in the PowerShell to run the WinRM configuration wizard script. Next, we need to go to where the script is, which for me is saved in downloads and Microsoft RPAC. Here's the script. The next step is to run it with the appropriate user. Here we're going to use administrator user, which is in silo test domain. By the way, before we start, I just want to show you that we're going to configure PowerShell with encrypted option. We need to make sure that you have a proper computer certificate installed. Here in Person Store, you can see the important part is to have a certificate that has the client and server authentication in it. Now here, what you will need to have is the thumbprint, which will be specific to your organization. I've copied one out here already for this use case, but you will need one of your own. You can also get the thumbprint by using PowerShell. And this is the command that is used in the manual. See the thumbprint, which is pretty much the same right here, 46 AD. So now we'll run the script that I have saved in my notepad. Copy. And paste into PowerShell. Just copy again. Paste. OK, and then we'll need to do run option. This is the domain computer. So we need to have Kerberos authentication on. Yes, we're going to use encrypted. Yes, this can be default. Next one is also.
We don't need to edit ports, but for unencrypted 5985 is used. 5986 is used for encrypted. Here's where it asks for the certificate thumbprint. So I'm going to copy this and paste it in here. OK. Now it asks for confirmation. We'll click on OK. And then OK. To see the configuration, you can actually use these commands. As you can see, this is the certificate thumbprint. This certificate with the thumbprint will be used for HTTPS communication. These are our ports. Kerberos authentication is enabled. Unencrypted says disabled and that's for service. So it's the listener. Check that again. Here's the listener and it will listen on this IP and this port. When you configure HTTPS or encrypted communication, normally the firewall rules are not updated. You'll need to go into the firewall This is the Windows firewall and add the rule that will look like that. It's just a TCP port rule to allow 5986 communication. We can actually try to redo this. Let's delete that. Let's go through that again. Select port. TCP 5986 Allow connection Next Let's name it WinRM Encrypted and hit Finish Finish And that's it Now your Windows machine is ready to be monitored by SL1 In order to manually configure it, you'll need to go through a different section, which is right here. Manually configuring Windows Remote Management. So you'll need to execute those commands one by one. Here's the set of commands that are used in the manual. Keep in mind that this one will be HTTP if you're not using the encrypted option. If Windows machines are part of the domain managed by Active Directory, you can use Group Policy to configure them in bulk. Please use this section of the manual that you can download with Microsoft Windows Server Power Pack. Go to the Domain Controller and open Group Policy Editor. Then create a copy of the default domain policy. Modify the copied policy according to the manual. Here I have created a copy and called it Windows Remote Management with all required changes that we need for PowerShell monitoring. Now let's see what happens when I link and enforce it. Now the changes from your group policy will apply to all computers that are connected to the domain as they detect the changes that need to be applied. Let's use this command to speed up the application of the new configuration. It will have the Windows machine that you run it on to read and apply updated configuration immediately. To note, the only thing that it doesn't do, it doesn't change the WinRM service transport to use HTTPS. So you will need to run this command using startup scripts. Here is the command that needs to be added to startup scripts. WinRM quick config, transport HTTPS. If you follow our steps in the manual, the certificate will be automatically generated and used in WinRM configuration for encrypted communication. You also need to keep in mind that the certificate may expire, so that's another risk when configuring WinRM using encrypted option. Let's check that to see if it is updated. We can see source GPO, which indicates that configuration was applied from the group policy. You can see that Kerberos authentication is enabled, and IP filter is set to star, 
which means it allows communication from any source IP. Thumbprint is also set, which means the certificate is configured for encrypted communication.